Hello, welcome to BAS Explained. In this video, we will see how to select a damper and how to size the damper actuator to the selected dampers. There are a total of two types of dampers, which I can see a physical uh, dimension of a square or a rectangle and another of a circular dimension. So we differentiate between these two based on how they are physically aligned. So we have square dampers or maybe rectangular dampers and we have round dampers. This is not the accurate uh, imaging which I want to display as a round damper but somewhat the same you'll see a shaft and a damper plate which will obstruct the flow coming from these dampers but you'll see a shaft coming out of the damper where you'll mount, where you'll mount your damper actuator uh, like what we see here for a square damper. So what do we need for sizing the damper uh, actuator? We'll get to see uh, how we size our dampers or how we select our dampers and what it all goes through that selection. But the first and foremost thing what we need is the area calculation of the dampers. So the areas are calculated for squares which is with a multiplication of your width and length. So all the dimensions which will be given in the drawings will put uh, in, in most of the cases will be in inches. That's the standard of the Imperial, what we're going to see. So all the inches will be uh, calculated or converted to feet by dividing uh, by from 144, which is 12 inches is one feet so when uh, width into length divided by 144 gives you an area for a rectangular or a square damper and for a round damper you'll see pi r square r representing the radius of that damper you'll see the dimensions given uh, in the drawing of diameter you'll have to half it and then convert that for feet square which is again dividing by 144 now the other thing which we want to see is if your drawing gives you only CFM and not the FPM, you'll have to calculate the FPM, which is the total cubic uh, feet per minute, which is divided by the area would give you the FPM or the other way around. If you multiply the area by FPM, you'll get the CFM as well. Okay, so I so I have a, a sample a spreadsheet which is made for damper selection uh, created. So let's say we have five different dampers, which is one for outside supply, return, exhaust, and round damper. I'm taking consideration of the manufacturer Ruskin and using their model CD and CDR. CD is for rectangular and square and CDR is for the round dampers. So you'll get all these information of what the damper type is, if it is parallel or opposed from your drawings and you'll see these dimensions given, which is what we have calculated from these dimension is the area here. You can see the calculation of these two these two getting multiplied and divided by 144 give me in feet square and i have the cfm i've calculated the fpm as well by doing uh, by dividing the cfm by area which gives me the fpm as well the next thing what we want to do is see what the torque factor for this particular dimension and the flow which is calculated so where will you get this torque factor so the torque factor will get it to in any uh, manufacturers website if you go to Google and say Ruskin torque factor in Google it will prompt you with a uh, with their own particular torque factors which they have so as you can see with the torque factors, what they have given here is with the model numbers, what would be the torque factor 
which will be coming along which is five inch two and a half inch with seals or without seals based on what what you guys would be selecting so based on that uh, table i i have grabbed a few uh, talk tape talk vector tables from different other manufacturers as you can see so this is a Honeywell table to which you can see if you are selecting a D1 or a D2 damper which is parallel and has a FPM which is base velocity of 1000 or 1500 or 2000 below 2000 or below 2500 based on that you'll select these numbers here to put into your calculation uh, to see how much the actual uh, torque would be coming for your actual flow with that damper same as this is a different other uh, manufacturer where you can see 1200 2500 and 3000 feet per minute and the same goes for this one i think this is a bellimo uh, torque vector table so based on this talk vector table what you do is from the area which you have found out or calculated you multiply your torque factor to see the actual torque required and you will size your actuators according to that torque which is calculated so usually the actuators will be uh, sized in this way and you'll see different uh, sizing of actuator sizes of actuator available in the market which can vary say from 20 lb 20 inch lbs to probably 175 inch lb or more than that so you can size that based on your calculation which is done so let's see in our in our case due to different dimensions how much we're going to see how the sizing goes of the actuator so you can see the total torque which is getting calculated from 14 getting multiplied to the area so if i change this area from 20 to 30 here you can see my torque getting increased as you can see the different other calculations for a bigger damper here with the area which is bigger than this you can see the torque going to uh, almost up to 97 so it is usually if, if the total torque calculated is this much my recommendation or uh, it would be advisable to take at least 20 percent of safety uh, increase in this thing so if your total torque is 97 do not size an act actuator which is neck to neck of 100 inch lv at least go more than that and size greater than what you see as a total torque the other requirements which you'll see is what power supply do you want? What is the power requirement? Do you guys want a 24 volts actuator or a 120 volts actuator? You can select based on that and the output signal, which is usually uh, 0 to 10 or 2 to 10 or 4 to 20 milliamps, whatever you guys have in your control section. Now, the other thing which you want to see is when the power is lost, when the power is lost you want to see uh, either you want your uh, damper to fail close or fail open usually if it's not a critical application we do not take spring action it is non-spring written actuators that we will select but let's say uh, the area which you are uh, working is say the north american pole or somewhere there where the winter conditions go below um, 30 or somewhere there which you, where you don't want to bring your uh, outside air coming in and if your actuator fails there is no power supply you would want to close your dampers uh, not to bring in fresh uh, air which is ice cold which can burst your um, coils uh, and uh, cause quite a little damage uh, so spring written uh, action is to be considered whenever you are selecting a damper actuator as well and uh, yeah so this is uh, pretty much how you size the damper and damper actuator based on 
your model you will be selecting uh, the talk requirement and sizing the uh, actuator based on the total torque which is induced so uh, i uh, have a brief video how to install or how the damper actuator gets installed in the next section uh, please go go through that so this is how a typical damper actuator would look like this is where you will do your wiring and everything here and this is where the shaft latches to the teeth you can see the teeth here so if we loosen this thing a bit you can see this thing which can latch onto the shaft so this is usually how it mounts and you'll get support here where you'll screw in to hold the support to the damper uh, shaft so this is easily to install so you see this is not moving if you want a rotation z90 you can adjust this to a point where you want to stand still if if your damper is actually reversed if you want to make the starting position to a 90 you'll have to rotate this here and then change your direction if it want to go to 2 to 10 or 10 to 2 or something so it's easy to detach this you take the clip off and you can see this thing comes out you want it either to 0 or to 90 wherever you want according to your application and put it back this thing holds still thank you for watching the video Please like, share and subscribe for more videos to come and put down your comments for the videos which you are looking forward to. Thanks.